Cole, it's been 10 years since your first national series win here in New Hampshire. Why don't you get us started and tell us what this means for you to be back here today? This weekend? Yeah, I mean, it's always been really special for me going to New Hampshire. Um, you know, I won my first can or not my first, but won a, won a can and end race here. And then the next year won that truck race here. And um, it's always been a fun place to really go. It means a lot to win here just because of how hard it is for the teams to get the cars right around these flat corners and for the drivers to try and manage that. But um, it's always a place. The fans are so awesome here. Um, it's awesome to come back here. And I think uh, reliving that day of when I first won, you know, 10 years ago now, which is hard to think, um, is definitely pretty cool and pretty special. Perfect. We'll go ahead and get started with questions. If you have a question, raise your hand and we'll get a mic to you. We'll start with Jim and then Bob. Jim Utter, Motorsport.com. So uh, with Gene's announcement this week, um, I know that I guess there was already some plans with the Xfinity team, but the cup, keeping a cup team was a surprise. Are you hopeful or are you involved in any of those discussions with those programs about your future for next year? Uh, I think for me going when, – whenever I went back to the Xfinity series, my goal was always to go back to cup, you know? So I've been trying to work on what I can do to get myself better over the past year and a half. And, um, at the end of the day, you know, you try and do as best you can and you hope it all sorts itself out, so sorts itself out. Um, but I really don't have much to say or anything right now that's solidified or anything. So, uh, we're just kind of focused on New Hampshire and trying to win here. We'll go to Bob and then Alan and then Lee. Bob Pockers, Fox Sports. Well, I asked your dad if you were a candidate for that cup car, and he told me to ask you. So do you <laughs> That's feel... That's great. Yeah, yeah, so he put the onus on you on this. So, I mean, do you, do you feel like you're a candidate for that cup car? Would you like to run that cup car? Or, you know, some people prefer not to run for family. Yeah, I mean, I'd love to. I mean, at, at the end of the day, it's always, you know, that's what my career's been, I guess, is, you know, it's always tied, you know, that, that relationship. But um, at the end of the day, I think, you know, what Gene Haas has done in this sport and, you know, it, it would be a dream come true to get to run that cup car, you know. But um, for me, I mean, I just I'm focused on this weekend and trying to figure out how to win here. But um, obviously for me, I've I've tried to go back to the Xfinity Series, prove what I can do and try and make the most of it. And um, you just kind of try and hope it all sorts itself out from there. We'll go to Alan. Uh, Alan Kavana, PRN. Now that you're at the ripe old age of 26 and have a lot of maturity and wisdom, what do you think about a 16-year? You won as a 16-year-old. Does that blow your mind thinking about a 16-year-old winning a truck race right now and what you accomplished and what that's like now that you have 10 years on it? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty crazy to think. You know, I mean, at that time, I really didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> you know, I was just trying to go out there and hit the gas and go fast. You know, and hopefully you had a car underneath you that could do it. You know, but. Um, now I think you just have so much more knowledge of what goes into it. And, um, on the bad days, you're able to make more of the most of it, you know? So before I feel like when you're that young, it's like, if you get thrown a curveball and your, your truck's not very good that weekend, you're not very, you're, you're overall just struggling. It's harder to, to know what to do to make the most of it when as a veteran, you just kind of know how to grind away and, you know, make the most of a day. But, um, that was one of those magical days where you have everything work out right. You have a great truck and it all works out. We'll go to Lee. Lee Spencer, Sirius XM, Niasco Radio, and CatchFence.com. Funny, you and Bob and I are on the same page, <laughs> right? Um, kind of curious, I talked to Ty Gibbs about this, and it's kind of an interesting dynamic when your family's involved with the race team, right? Um, but he also said that if he's racing against somebody that he thinks should get a shot, he will s say something to his dad or, or his granddad or his mom. And I'm kind of curious, with the two two Xfinity opportunities opening over there. Do you have that same kind of input? Does your dad say, you know, because I mean, he can have an educated eye and look at it, but you're the guy that's actually racing against these guys in Xfinity. Yeah, I mean, I can't say that there's been a huge dynamic with that, but there's definitely, you know, he'll at times ask me about some guys, you know, about, you know, who's, uh, who's a good candidate for whatever it is, I guess. But um, yeah, I mean, he's he's got a lot of experience. He can handle it, you know, but I think, yeah, it, it is a good thing where I can kind of maybe give him a little bit of feedback on things. Uh, Terrell Covey on the ports with Harold. Uh, so as you look to hopefully uh, fill that opportunity at the, at the cup level, back-to-back uh, -back Xfinity championships would be a pretty big feather in your cap. I know it's early to really think too much about that, but um, could you use a, a track like this where you've had a lot of success to kind of springboard yourself towards another championship? 
For sure. I mean, I always look forward to coming to New Hampshire, and this is a place that's always special coming back to. Um, so I always look forward to it, and you just hope that you know you have everything underneath you to go and compete for a win. But um, I think at the end of the day, we should have a shot at this weekend. Our guys are doing a great job. We just have to break through. You know, I feel like we're top five or so every single weekend, and. You know, it's it's very strange to be leading the points, but also a little bit frustrated that you haven't won yet. You know, so um, it's I think it's coming. We just got to keep knocking on the door. Pat Dicola, NASCAR NASCAR dot com. Where the path seems to be leading you back to the Cup Series eventually. Uh, what would the approach be differently now that you've had a couple of years to digest and like kind of learn from what you went through and and just the past couple of years in Xfinity? Like, what's what's changes now? I guess. Well, I think at the end of the day, I think the biggest thing is just how you communicate with your team. I think. At the cup level, I mean, the top 30 guys, like you give them, you give them something underneath them that they can go fast with. You give them a good car, a fast car, they're going to go fast. You know, the top 30 guys all have talent. Um, it's just how you communicate with your team to get that consistently. You know, how you work with your team to fix problems and um, really be able to hone in on getting the car exactly how you want it every single weekend and consistent. So um, you just have to really be able to communicate with your team to try and fix those problems. And I've tried to do that over the last year or so and really try and gain knowledge in that area are you a top 30 talent in the sport i hope so yeah i mean i think i think i can definitely do it i think when you look at what i've done at the xfinity level i think the guys that i've raced against that are in that are in the cup level now um you know i think there's no reason why you can't hey cole doug rice prn for some athletes to have moved from cup back over to xfinity we would have never heard from him again. You prospered. You went over there. You won a title. What what advice did were you given, or did what did you say to yourself to be so successful in that transition? I think the biggest thing is you got to look yourself in the mirror. You know, you got to figure out the ways that you can be better. Um, you just can't, you know, put it all off the side and say that you're good enough and that you, you know, don't need to work on anything. You know, you got to try and work on yourself and try and keep making gains in those areas because at the end of the day like it's ne never always a perfect situation you know you got to try and make the most of it and work with your team and try and fix problems there's very few weekends uh, except for maybe the weekend when i showed up here 10 years ago <laughs> where the truck's just perfect you know you got to go out there and really work at it to make it make it how you want it to be so um you just got to work on those areas to keep that getting better and better we'll go to jim and then holly this is sort of a follow-up to doug's question um when you were originally told, you know, that you weren't going to stay in Cup and go to Xfinity, I'm sure most people in such situations would think, well, I should stay here, right? But as he mentioned, what, when you, once you got back into Xfinity last year, won a championship, which Tony Stewart said this was the reason why we did this, what did you find or did you find anything in particular that you thought you, that has, you have shown since you got back in Xfinity that maybe help, will help you on your return to Cup? I think the great thing that was about our Xfinity season last year, and even this year a little bit, is that it's not, it's not easy. <laughs> you know, it's, it's not like we go out there and win every single race and you know, just because our cars are way better than everybody's or I'm way better than everybody or whatever it is. It's not easy. Like the Xfinity series has 15 guys out there that can go out there and win. And if you're off, you're going to run 15th. So um having to really work at it and try and work with your team to get the cars better and better and better throughout the year and have it all come together in the playoffs last year i think just showed a lot of i think just some more maturity and being able to really work through problems and uh make the most of things welcome to holly Thanks. Uh, Holly came to the NASCAR Wire Service. My question kind of plays into that as well. There have been years where it's two guys that are racing for the championship all year, but it's really a lot, lot more competitive for you. What is that like, you know, knowing that there's four, five, six, you say 15 guys that can win, in, you know, any week, and, and how are you approaching it with that? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's just great for the Xfinity series. You know, uh, there were a lot of years, you know, when Kyle Busch would win 10 races or 12 races. And, you know, in I think 2019, when my f last year before moving to Cup, it was, you know, me, Tyler, and uh, Christopher Bell that won a lot of races, you know. <laughs> so it's just that doesn't really happen anymore, I feel like. You know, you, you have so many guys that the package has really stayed really similar of the cars. So I think a lot of teams have honed in on how to make their cars better, and it's equaled the field out. Um, but I think there's, it just makes it more competitive, and I think it's good for the series. Is it 
I think so. I mean, well, I mean, you want to be the guy who wins 10 races a year, <laughs> you know, so I mean, that'd be way more enjoyable. But um, I think it is cool to get to go and grind it out with a bunch of guys and not have it be easy. You know, you got to go out there and really work for it. Lee? So Sam Mayer last week said basically he was just blown away that his phone hasn't rung because he's won two races this year. He won four races last year. And having gone through the, okay, they put me up in cup. I'm not in really a competitive equipment. Now I've got to go back, come back again. Would you have rather been in a situation where you had a team that you could compete in the top 15 all the time and kind of show what your potential was? And is it a game changer when you're not? And then you have to go back, prove yourself. I mean, you've done it, John Hunter's done it. You know, there's a handful of people that have done that. Is it better to, I guess, maybe be a little more mature and wait for the right opportunity to come than any opportunity to come in Cup? And my follow-up to that is, if indeed, who are the people, and you race against them, who are the guys that we should be looking at in Xfinity right now that have the potential to one day be Sunday drivers? Yeah, I mean, I think, man, what was the first part of the question? <laughs> um, <laughs> it was, uh, what was the first part? Well, they're going back and forth. Yep. You know, if you come up when you're mature, you're mm -hmm. talent, you know, because you're seeing guys like Cam, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there's a right time to get to Sunday with the right team on Sunday. Yeah. Well, I think the hard part about Cup is that the, the opportunities are, are, you know, it's not like there's just a ton of them. So you take them when you can get them, you know. Like it's it's not like you're going to get one every single year, an opportunity to go Cup racing. So um, a lot of guys, you know, yeah, like you got to take that shot even, you know, no matter what the car is a lot of the time. Um, and you see a lot of guys, you know, like uh, say Truex, you know, he – didn't get to Gibbs till he was, you know, later in his career, and um, different guys that have gone that path. And um, but at the end of the day, if you can go Cup racing, you go Cup racing. You know, like it's it's definitely it's the place every driver wants to be and compete against the best. So who are the drivers we should be looking at as potential Sunday drivers in race? Uh, you know, I think Chandler Smith does a good job. I think uh, Carson Quapel, obviously, he was really impressive at Martinsville and and Dover. Um, I'd, I'd have to really look at the list, <laughs> you know, but um, that definitely kind of topped my mind, I guess. We'll go to Deb. Deb Williams, Auto Week. Carl, I kind of want to go back to what Holly and, and Jim were talking about. When you were saying you needed to look at yourself in the mirror and evaluate everything, looking back and analyzing when you were in Cup, what do you see as mistakes that you made that you would give advice to another younger driver coming along of, of watch out for this, don't do this, or things that you cor have corrected now where you know you made your mistakes and cut the first time? I think just knowing how you need to communicate with your people, you know, like kind of what I've said before, you know, it, if that isn't right, you know, it's just not going to work, you know, and um, you just have to make sure that you can go out there and, and really work with your team and you know try and fix problems the best you can and if you're not able to talk with your team openly and really fix those problems you know that's where it, it gets tough you know so um i think that would be the biggest thing that i'd probably learn from so how do you know when it's time to make a change <laughs> uh i guess whenever you get that feeling you know i that's all i can really say yeah. okay thank you do we have any final questions for Cole? All right, thanks, Cole. Good luck this weekend. Thank you, guys. Steven Stump of FrontStretch.com here. Come back for more great racing videos, and if you like us, don't forget to hit that subscribe button.